happy New Year's Day 2021. Let's hope you'll have a better 2021 than you did in 2020. Cracker morning. Last night we were just basically sat around the um, under the awnings. A fair bit of rain last night. And um, one thing we did work out with the awning is this is the Darchi 270 degree awning. And Y62 no owners that have been looking at this awning would know that when you get the 270 degree one, there's a bit of an issue at the back. It tends to foul with the tailgate. So, thanks to Gavin Harris actually, who gave me this idea. The strap that you use basically strap the last two um, cross beams up so it sort of turns into a 180 degree awning ish. Um, therefore, when I want to have 270, I have it all the way around. When I just want a 180, I just do this. But we've put it up again this morning to let it dry out because it did get quite wet. Check out all the 62s around the place. One here, one over there, one up there. A new one rolled in last night, Series 5, right up the end. Um, it would have got a nice surprise seeing some fellow 62s here. I'm not very good at just sitting around at caravan parks. I like to have, like, bring myself little homework jobs to do. And I reckon today's is going to be mounting a light bar up the top there. Because, yeah, when we get to LCMP and even Fraser, it's probably going to be pretty dark. There's no lights. I wouldn't mind having a light bar up there. So I think I might make that this morning's job. I've pre-wired a fair bit down here at the bottom end. I've already ran cables up to the roof rack. Um, I'll show you that. You can see up here, I've got seven core four mil cables that come through the grommet. through here into that grommet and then down around down here under the floor and there's already a heap of relays and things under there ready to go for this job you might have noticed the big solar panel on the roof it's a 330 watt 48 volt uh, and it can pump out about 20 amps uh, into into my battery now you might think hang on 20 amps going through a four mil cable not cool but because it's at 48 volt current drops so it's only sort of like 8 amps at 48 volts and then when it gets down here it's stepped up by the Victron solar inverter stepped up stepped down to 12 13 14 volts and that's when it uh, current then increases so it's really cool I can run a small wire through that grommet opposed because I got a 48 volt panel if I got a normal 24 volt panel I would have to use a thicker wire. So that helped me out. Anyway, annoyingly, I have to pull all of this out, pull the floor out, and turn the floor upside down to show you all the work that's gone on under there. All out, being modular, I don't have to take the whole floor out, I just have to take that part out. So I'll go and unbolt that. There's two bolts underneath where it bolts to the floor of the car and three bolts across here, Allen key bolts, so I'll take them out. I'll show you the toolkit that I've changed for this trip. I'm like Before I used to have a collective sort of tool bag for the last 20 years and it's just got a dog's breakfast of all sorts in it. And I thought I need a compact toolkit that I can throw in my car, that's just everything's in one kit. At the same time, if I have to pick up the kit and go fix my car or someone else's car, it's just pick up one thing and walk over and, you know, cut a drive shaft out or something like that. I'll, I'll show you what I ended up with. This is like a Stanley, I'm not saying it's the best tool kit in the world, I'm just saying it's pretty good for this purpose. So it's got pretty much everything you could want in here. Allen keys, or you can turn this into any type of screwdriver head, pliers, cutters. I went for this one over a couple of other brands because it had the pliers in it as well. 
um, every socket you could think of except for a 36 mil it tops out at 32 so I've got to put a 36 mil because that's the, what the um, back wheel if you have to change a drive shaft is so that's still in one of these boxes but I'm pretty pretty stoked with this actually I've used it quite a few times quality is okay not the best but it's pretty good um, and I reckon that's going to be a lighter way not light, a more efficient way to use space in the back of this thing. It's all unbolted, so I'll come around this way. This is like my electrical hub under here, charging and everything. So I've moved everything that was on top and in there is now uh, quite messily there. Um, unbolted the bolts under here, easy enough to do. Now, see if I can perch this camera so you can see it. Because when I pull this up, can I do this one handed? Hmm, I need to find a better camera angle. Solar is here. Um, well, that's the Victron uh, solar controller. That's the Victron smart shunt. I've got a bunch of relays set up here ready to go. A bunch of fuses ready to go. And one of these wires, I can't remember which one, is gonna be already at the top waiting for my light bar. pulled one of these relays out. I don't play with relays a, a lot and I have to think about it every time and <laughs> I'm going to use this for my own reference in the video because right essentially with relays you've got basically a connection from here to here and left to right and kind of imagine two circuits here so when a switching wire comes in and powers this terminal so it can't like active neutral or plus minus um, it creates I think a, a magnetic effect and opens this circuit going that way so if you have your big power cable coming in here onto this um, vertical pin when power comes in this side it switches this circuit that way so this becomes positive does that make sense you put power to there and power to there goes out now why would you use a relay so you don't have to use big current or big cable to run bigger current for light bars etc uh, you can you know expense you can you cost less to, to buy thinner cable because you only need thinner cable on your switching and you don't have to run the power cable as far and because the power cable isn't as long you don't get voltage drop so lots of smart reasons to run relays must admit there's something therapeutic about terminating cables. I don't know what it is. I just like doing it. Oh, so many people are going to tell me off for using my pliers. I'm supposed to be using the crimpers. But I've just, I've, I've always done it this way and it's always worked. But just for the purists out there, I'll use the crimpers as well. Alright, for these. Blue is in the middle. That's the difference in connections actually. So you can see this one has grabbed everything evenly, put pressure on the whole crimp. That one has just dug a hole in the middle. I've never had a problem with that one, but that is the proper way to do it. Perfect, should be better than done sometimes. Relays all wired up, fused. Tried to make it as neat as possible, but like it's always a work in progress in my life, so. Anyway, I've kept it as neat as I can. I've just put the switch up here for now because I don't know what I'm doing with switching. But um, now I just have to do the top and I can put all this back together. Had to call the install a little bit short. Uh, we're off to SeaWorld today. So you see a bunch of 62s at SeaWorld, that's us. We'll 
finish it later though. I think Service Paradise is used to seeing um, a bunch of kitted out patrols come through here. Getting a few, few looks as we go. Back at camp. Very happy to be back at camp because, oh, just too many people for me, to be honest. Kids. My kids aren't used to theme parks and they're 8 and 10 and two full days of theme parks has killed them so they're ratty as. Uh, I can't offer any advice, I don't know what I'd do different. Just maybe shorter days. Not back to back. But they suck you in, they make you buy the tickets so you, like, you get them all in days in a row. Anyway, we're back to finish the, the install. This is the light bar, this is the, the Hummer 20 inch one. It usually goes on the front of our um, Predator bars, but I've got a spare one for the back. Gee, I wish I brought some um, slide nuts to fit in here with me, um, but I didn't bring that in my kit. I'll work something out though. Essentially, these come with one of these Deutsch plug things. Um, I just have to wire that into the wires that are already running up through here into the roof rack system. Flick the switch and it should turn on, hopefully. Let's finish it off. Now, these little jobbies. Now, <laughs> we ask around camp, who's got bits and pieces? Gotta love traveling in a convoy. So I found this slide nut. I think it's an ARB one actually. So that can slide in here and along. Through that Allen key through the top. And that will have my mounts for this light bar sorted. Wiring's already here. Only issue is I can't remember which color I uh, connected and it's all put to, put back together down the bottom so I'm gonna have to go back and re-watch this video to see which one I need to put a Deutsch connector on here thank goodness for the video all right I'm not gonna claim to be the best soldering electronic person in the world but this is how I do it so first of all make sure you put all your heat trick on first you don't want to make that mistake cut the two wires a bit longer than probably what you normally would Fold them in half, twist them together like so, and then wrap around like this. So there's some mechanical strength. Even if I do a dry solder, there's some mechanical strength holding these together. And uh, if you're not sure, you can get a bit of pliers and even wrap this a little bit more. Next, get your soldering iron like so, bit of solder, and what I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to do this sort of back to front so you can see it. I don't know if it's a work. All right, that's not what you do. <laughs> Let's do that again. All right, live and raw. Okay, let's try that again. All right, what we're trying to do here, maybe solder, and I'm trying to do this back to front. Is it gonna fall again? I think so. All right, is to make heat transfer, put some solder on here to start with. Then you're applying heat to the join. I'm not sure if you can see it from that side, but I'll do my best to show you. Then what I'm doing is I'm start off by putting the solder. I can only just see because I'm trying to give you a good view of it. Oh no. That's what ended up happening. <laughs> if I did this without a camera in my face, or maybe an assistant or some sort of holder, it would have come out even better again. But hopefully you got a bit of an idea on what that was supposed to do. Man, I really should buy myself some proper camera jig things. All right, there's the other one I did. That one I'm all right with, that one not so great, but it'll work. The most therapeutic part of the job, applying the heat shrink like so. Okay, there it is, done, done, done. And just as the light's coming down, so we'll be able to test it for the spread of the beam and all that sort of stuff. It's uh, got a, what is it, spread beam on the outside and spot in the middle, which will give me tons of light around the campsite. 
I've got stacks of power. Uh, I think it's going to be a good little mod. I'll, I'll show you at LCMP and Fraser. So this is to show you what daytime looks like behind the car with this whoppy and the other patrol and this is what nighttime looks like been waiting ages for it to get dark had a shower a bit of a shave and time to test the light bar it's fair to say it's pretty dark that's what we can see without and now turn on there's a torch on my phone camera Oh, oh, that's significant. Yeah, not gonna have any issues seeing anything behind me at camp ever again. <laughs> that's cool, 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 cool. All right, that's this episode done and dusted. See you next time. Thanks for all the comments, by the way. I really appreciate it. And it actually helps me give ideas for what the next vlog's going to be on. So, um, yeah, leave the comments below. And I will see you next time on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.